So people uh, have uh, told me before that sometimes I speak a bit too broadly about topics when I come and, and speak in front of groups. So today, I'm not going to speak about the entire universe. Instead, what we're going to focus on, we're going to talk about all of the issues that relate to Earth and humankind. OK, so not quite everything. We're going to focus a bit more. We're going to focus on all social problems that face us in the world. If we want to narrow it down a little bit more and, and sort of clarify it, we can think about the Millennium Development Goals. I'm sure most of you know the MDGs. So with billions of dollars and trillions of dollars spent on these social issues around the world, where is it getting us? <clears throat> For some reason, we're stuck in a little bit of a rut. Now, I don't have the answer for exactly how we're going to get out of this rut, but I have some ideas. And they're not ideas about solutions. Really what I want to talk about and share a bit today is some ideas around how we can not think so much about the solutions, but think about a different way of solving problems. How can we frame the problems in a way that we understand them differently? And how can we frame the solutions as well in a way that we can attack them from a different mindset? A scalable, durable mindset aiming for large-scale impact, whether here in Lebanon, focusing on the region, or even more globally. And how, how we can bring in some elements that relate to business, the startup tools, etc. Now one thing that we're going to start with here quickly is stereotypes, because we all love generalizations and stereotypes, right? So a few stereotypes to sort of understand maybe some differences between a traditional NGO approach and a traditional business approach. Is sometimes we get caught up on what are some of the things that we have to do just to survive within the environment, with the donors, with work, with hierarchy, with the projects, with the beneficiaries. Balancing so many different things can really be quite difficult. Sometimes we get lost thinking that reports are the actual outcome, or thinking that deliverables are a checklist rather than a change in people's lives. Or I know from my own experience here, sometimes part of groups, part of activist groups, where we would celebrate getting things covered in the newspaper even if it didn't lead to actual real impact on the ground. So we want to think of how we can reframe that. In my mind, the biggest crisis that we have in the world is not related to poverty or water, et cetera. It's related to a global crisis in low expectations. If you have low expectations of a student in high school, they'll deliver low results. We have low expectations for our government here in Lebanon, and they deliver low results, and we still don't get angry at them. If we have low expectations for ourselves and our lives, both our personal lives, our work lives, happiness, and I think that there's as well global crises around unhappiness, dissatisfaction, loneliness in this world. So how can we work on addressing this crisis and expectations first and foremost? Now there's some organizations that are trying to do really great stuff, so how can we try to infuse those groups with these ideas that are around the mindsets of entrepreneurship, tech, etc., really bringing the startup mindset into this, into this uh, realm of the, the NGO world? So, one of the things that we want to sort of throw out there is around this, these elements of you know, the, the pace of innovation, of technology, of startups, the energy around technology and business, this pursuit of markets, this, this addiction to customer service, speed, and uh, efficiency. And how can we bring that into the realm of solving some of the deep, deepest problems we face in, in Lebanon and the world? So one thing that we use a lot in our work at Alt City, both with NGOs and with startups, is called the Lean Startup Method. Now this idea is, is, is a transformative approach that's actually changed the world of technology that we use, and it's transformed how Silicon Valley, London, New York, et cetera, approach startups globally. And it's really quite simple, actually. Just taking a couple new approaches, how we can make the process cheaper, lighter, faster, how we can test and fail more often in the pursuit of finding those ideas that can really have the solid impact. Now here in the, in the NGO world, failure oftentimes is a bad thing. And saying that you want to you know, maybe write a grant uh, proposal, that you want to try five or seven different ideas, a couple of them are going to fail, maybe one or two of them are going to succeed, might not work out very well in terms of a proposal for some of the traditional agencies. So how can we, how can we twist that to be something that works within this sort of environment? validating, prototyping, testing, experimenting, launching, and then still continuing the process of learning and changing, evolving, and iterating. How can we bring this element of dream, try, do, and also with the element that failure is OK? So another process that we oftentimes think about 
Let's overlay that with the design thinking process where you talk about how you can brainstorm, think about the problem, and then uh, focus on a particular challenge, and then deal with brainstorming different solutions. But the, the, the number one thing from this that I want to share is that the first key element around the design thinking process is empathizing. How can you really connect with the people who you want to deal with, work with, serve, the beneficiaries, your partners, etc.? The Singularity uh, University is not actually a university. It's a program in the Silicon Valley where every summer they bring together bright people from around the world to tackle some of the world's deepest challenges. Water, environment, pollution, uh, education, food security, etc. But what makes this one really special is that all of the groups that come together are supposed to work on coming up with a solution that can scale to serve one billion people within 10 years of launching. So imagine getting people together here to brainstorm, thinking about these different ideas at a massive scale. And how could we bring this element here in, in, uh, in Lebanon? Now, Singularity is based in Silicon Valley. And this is where I grew up as well. And people always talk about how it's such a unique place. There's so much dynamism, so much energy. You can't replace it. You can't copy it. There's more transactions that happen in the startup world in Silicon Valley that, than happen in the entire rest of the world combined. But one of the things that I'm always surprised about when I go back there is that I'm impressed by how unremarkable it is in terms of the rest of the world. Of course, there are bright people there in their great universities, but there are bright people here. There are, bright, uh, there are great resources there. There are great resources around the world. The number one thing in my mind that makes Silicon Valley different is that people both have the expectation of doing amazing things, building global things, that can scale to something like a billion. And as well, they work together. They collaborate. They support each other. They provide resources. If someone comes up with a crazy idea, they don't dismiss it. They ask questions about it. A man much greater than myself said, anyone can be great because anyone can serve. But right now, I think anyone can be great because anyone can serve at scale because times have changed. What, what were the challenges when Silicon Valley started? are not the challenges today in terms of starting up new projects. Here, now, we have access to amazing tools like WordPress to build and launch amazing products. You can take courses at, any of the top, at some of the top institutions from around the world for free from your computer from Beirut. We, can have, we have access to the world's information, and we have amazing networks of our communities through LinkedIn and Facebook and these kinds of tools. What we don't have are excuses. Here, um, uh, I'm sure many of you know about Grameen Bank, which was able to launch uh, microfinance tools that brought millions of people out of poverty. Or M-Pesa, which enabled millions of people in Africa to enter the market through mobile banking. Or here in Lebanon, we have amazing projects as well that we can look up to and learn from, like Cedar Environmental, which is turning trash into amazing products. Or Cardio Diagnostics, which is a great tech tool that's saving people's lives by using technology to monitor their heart problems and alert people before even the person who has the problems know that they exist. <clears throat> Singularity University is based in Silicon Valley. But more importantly, it's a mindset. It's a community. It's an approach that here, anywhere, we can adopt, and we can dream big, and we can deliver. And hopefully, we can all get together and do some of that. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank <clears throat> you.